Why do false converts love 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4? I'm going to talk about that in this video. Now, let me just say right at the outset, I'm not saying that 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 is not the gospel. Um, what I'm saying is, Paul wrote this here, but he also wrote the Romans Road back in here. He didn't write, you know, God didn't inspire through Paul the writings of Romans and then later on say, ah, just kind of forget that. And we'll go with 15, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4. Just ignore the other stuff over there. Um, but I'm going to show you. So this is the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4. But it is also over there in the book of Romans. We're going to look at some of this today. But <clears throat> I'm going to show you why false converts will run to 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4. All right, let's read. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. They always mess that part up, but uh, you know, because they don't believe in the thing of believing in vain, even though it clearly says it. Verse 3, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scripture. And it goes on. Um, <clears throat> where is self-righteousness kicked there? It isn't. I've seen and talked to a lot of people over the years, face-to-face, door-to-door, the whole thing, witnessing to people and whatever else. Nearly everyone will admit to having sins in their life. I mean, uh, I'd like to tell you about heaven today, how to get to heaven when you die. Um, I'm sure that you could un admit that that... that you know, you've committed some sins. I mean, we're, you're not perfect, right? I mean, we've all sinned. You've sinned. I've sinned. We've all sinned, haven't we? Well, yes, of course. Well, then if you, all you have to do is just realize Jesus died for sins. He died for you and me. Just accept his death on the cross and you get to go to heaven when you die. Would you like to do that today? Sure, you'd like to be, be able to pray this prayer. Bow your head, close your eyes, repeat after me and you'll go into heaven when you die. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. Um, and people can say, they can admit Yes, I've committed some sins. I'm not a saint, you know. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm not really a saint or, you know, I'm not a saint or uh, I'm not, you know, perfect. I've done some things maybe, you know, that I, that I shouldn't do. Looked at some things, you know what I mean? You know, eh, eh. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not that bad of a person. I'm not like Hitler. I'm not like, uh, you know, you know, name them. Um, they'll do that. And so you look for a verse of Scripture or a passage of Scripture that just simply says, sins. And then you can avoid that nasty Romans road. That bumpy Romans road that just takes you and just destroys your self-righteousness. Let's look about that. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Verse 4. Let God be true, but every man a liar. Every man a liar? Huh? Yeah, go down to verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Huh? What? But, well, none? None? Everybody's getting condemned here? Mm hmm? Yeah. Verse 13, their throat is an open sepulcher. You know, they start talking to you and you say, oh, man, sorry, excuse me. Um, your, your breath smells like somebody just died down there in your stomach, you know, and you're breathing it. <laughs> Their throat is an open sepulcher. What a terrible thing to say. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips. Who, well, who's this talking about? Everyone. Everybody. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Well, I'm not a bad person. I've done some good things. Really? Verse 20. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. There, excuse me. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For the, by the law is the knowledge of sin. You're a sinner. You haven't kept the law. Well, I didn't think I was a bad person. Um, I'll go down through there. Verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You have to take somebody through all this stuff. You can't just go jump over to 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4 and say, there, sins, just a little, little word there, sins. 
Don't worry about it. We're all sins. You know, we've all committed sins. Excuse me, I say it that way. We're all sinners. We've, we can all say that we've sinned, right? Sure. I have sinned. You've sinned. We've all sinned. Okay? So now let's all just pray this prayer. And Jesus died for sins, so therefore good. Hey, you know, you can keep your self-righteousness. What's Romans chapter 4 about? Imputation. You're so vile, you're so wicked, so disgusting in God's sight, you open sepulchre, you. Um, rotten, filthy thing, yeah? Uh, you're so disgusting in God's sight that He has to actually impute His perfect righteousness to you. He had to die a terrible death. That's how bad you are. You've committed such crimes and such offenses against Almighty God that He had to actually come here and die a painful, horrible death that you deserve. Without His righteousness, you're going to go to hell and you're going to burn forever. Well, no, it's just, it's just separation from God. It's just death. No, it's burning forever. Torment. Eternal torment. You know, um, people around the world have forgotten the, the righteous fury of God. Um, people around the world have forgotten the cruelty of God. The terror of the Lord. A being that's actually going to mock those people that reject him and burn them forever. They've forgotten that. Romans chapter 5, verse 6 For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. You don't have anything in you that can save you. Your righteousness are, all your righteousness is just like filthy rags. The Bible talks about that. Verse 7, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. You say, well, I could probably fit into that group, right? Keep reading. Verse 8, But God commendeth His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You're rotten. You're terrible. You see, it's best just to avoid that Romans road. Just, just, just kind of... Let's just skip that stuff and just go right to 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. It's nicely packaged. We're all sinners. We've all committed sins. We can all say that, can't we? Of course we can. Let's just pray this prayer now because Jesus died for sins and we can go right to heaven when we die. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> What's Romans chapter 6 about? Romans chapter 6, you get into that thing. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? It's all about a changed life after you get saved. You're not supposed to continue in those sins. You're wretched, you're vile, you're terrible. The righteousness of Jesus Christ has to be imputed to you. you while you're a sinner, Jesus Christ died for you. But don't worry about it because when you get saved, you just continue in all that stuff that God called you wretched for. Uh, no, you're actually supposed to have a changed life. It's not sinless perfection where you just kind of reject this sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. You just kind of go, eh, whatever, like lordship salvation. That's not, the righteousness there is not imputed to me. It's, it's not finished work of the cross. It's just, it was good and it kind of gives me an example of what I should do with my life. How I'm continually supposed to sacrifice and put myself on the altar and just continually strive to keep sin away so I can one day be saved. No, 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 no. That's heresy. Absolute heresy. Um, but what the Bible is teaching is when you get saved, when you get born again, you understand those sins that were so vile that he had to die a terrible death. Now you're going to get rid of those sins with God's help. Did you hear me? With God's help, you'll get rid of the sins. That's what's there. You say, well, am I still going to struggle? Yeah, read Romans chapter 7. Verse 24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Um, you're not going to enjoy your life as much when you get saved. Yeah, sure, there's beautiful times. You're out in nature and things like that. You're out and you get fellowship with the Lord. The Lord gives you victory over sin. You get to witness to somebody, preach the gospel to them. There's really good times of joy and peace and everything else. Sure, absolutely. But you're going to find that there's a war going on. And you're going to say, just get to a point sometimes where you're just going to just say, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? You're going to hate your flesh. You're going to crucify your flesh. Put it down as a born-again Christian. Hmm. Verse 
Romans chapter 8, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. You get a little clause there. There's no condemnation to you if you're saved, unless you're walking in the flesh. Sin is destructive. Sin is negative. Sin only hurts you. So the punishment for sin, the wages of sin, is death. You say, well, that's to lost people. That's to save people and lost people. It's not spiritual death if you're saved. Thank the Lord for that. You don't go to hell when you die, but it's going to destroy your life. It's going to mess you up. Lost person, they have a problem with drunkenness. And they drink and they drink and they drink. Guess what happens? Um, cirrhosis of the liver. Other kind of, if they never get in a bad accident or something like that, they, they destroy their liver, they destroy their health, they destroy everything else. Die an old drunkard. I told this story many times before, but I had a neighbor up here in Maine that uh, died in his own vomit. Head first into the bathtub, died in his own vomit. Old drunkard. Roman Catholic drunkard. Never got saved. Tried to witness to him and he told me, I'll never believe what you believe. A few months later, he was dead and in hell. Oh, he believes what I believe now, but it's just too late for him. Mm -hmm. You say, well, praise God, I'm saved, but you know, I, I sure like to get drunk once in a while. Um, do you think that uh, somehow you now have a body that's not going to get cirrhosis of the liver? Um, no, you're going to have the same effects as a lost person from drunkenness. You're going to have the same effects as a lost person from looking at too much pornography. In fact, God's going to punish you much more harshly than a lost person. You're going to have the same effects with smoking. You're going to have the same effects with drug abuse, with the same effects with covetousness or with whatever, idolatry, whatever other sin you want to say. Hmm. I'm supposed to uh, have a changed life. Romans chapter 9 gets into the thing of Israel and God's plans for Israel and why you shouldn't mess around with the nation of Israel and you shouldn't come down on them. You get people into replacement theology, you're dealing with lost people unless they're just totally green and they don't know the arguments and whatever else. Um, I'll take it easy on some new Christian, but you get somebody that's been quote-unquote saved for a while and they get into replacement theology, you're dealing with a lost papist is what you're dealing with. But then you get it in Romans chapter 10. Hmm. You see, it's a lot easier just to say Gospels, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4, forget the rest. Forget whatever else Paul wrote about your self-righteousness being condemned and you need the righteousness of Jesus Christ imputed to you and you're no good and you're going to have to change your life when you get saved and you're going to struggle to the point of wishing that you were just with the Lord. You know, a wretched man that I am. And then understanding that there's condemnation on you when you sin as a Christian. Oh, just, just ignore all of that stuff. And especially you want to ignore Romans chapter 10 where you actually have to be broken. You come to a believing point there, verses 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You believe what he did on the cross. You understand that you're a wicked sinner. You go through the whole thing of having your self-righteous pride just crushed. And you realize, I don't care what God changes in my life. I don't care what this costs me. I don't care if it costs me my wife, my husband, my family members, my job, my house, my car, my whatever. I don't care what it costs me. I want to be saved now. And I need to be saved now. And what do you do? God, I need to be saved Belief leads to confession. Calling upon the name of the Lord to be saved. God, please save me. I need to be saved. Please, God, I don't want to go to hell when I die. And you start to get real desperate. And the Lord will save you. But if you're a false convert and you like your little man-made religion, well, then just go to 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. And don't tell me that uh, Paul didn't... Uh, preach a lot of this stuff to them about repentance and things like that. Um, it's all through the book of First and Second Corinthians. You'll find repentance and things and them having to change things and whatever else, and he's rebuking their sin and whatever. You'll see it all throughout. I mean, it's just 
there's so many satanic, wicked, false converts out there that they'll pretend that Paul wrote certain things to this group here and then he's preaching a different gospel over here. The gospels don't quite line up. You have the Romans road, that'll lead you to hell. And the 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that's, that's the way to heaven right there. Uh, Paul preached the same thing. But when you get somebody that does this splitting little, just cutting up the scriptures, hyper-dispensationalists are famous for this. They'll cut up the scriptures and say, this, doesn't, this isn't for you, this isn't, and it's, it's all Paul, stuff that Paul's writing to Christians. And they'll cut up all these different little things here. You're dealing with somebody that has a motive for cutting up the scriptures. And I know what it is, because I've dealt with these heretics for many, many years now. And it is self-righteousness. They can't stand to have that self-righteous pride kicked. That's why they run to 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. Be very careful who you're listening to on YouTube. Let me tell you that. I saw something recently. One of you commented in, in the comments, and I think that this is a this should be in you know burn this into your mind. Remember this: um, never listen to a preacher who's afraid to hold a Bible in his hands. You see these people online, and they're and they're saying, "Well, the the Bible says this, and the Bible says that." Are they holding the Bible? Are they telling you turning your Bible to watch out for that? Watch out for it. Be very careful who you listen to. Keep saying that. Um, some of you don't take heed to me. Uh, thankfully, a lot of you do. Um, but it's just... <laughs> there are a lot of false people out there. So, um, please keep us in your prayers. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.